Just so you guys understand how much of on the frontier we're at right now. Stop border ahead. This is the border. The end of Israel. Border of Lebanon right there. This is not Lebanon, it's Iran. The south part of Lebanon is Iran. Right here, it's a direct hit. There's not enough time for siren here. There's no sirens here. Yeah. Usually there's not. Look at those pink lady apples. What a shame. It's all gone to waste. When they're firing rockets at us, they're firing from the other side of this mountain. So it's not like something that you could see from here, right? No, no, no. To get a hold on this land, we have to pay a high price. Shalom, chaverim, and welcome to the north of Israel. I'm here in Rosh Pina. We are just meters away from the Chelmon, the tallest peak in Israel. You can see the snowy mountains behind me. I'm here with a viewer and a friend. His name is Nathan. He's been hosting me here in, uh, in the north in Haifa for the last couple of days. All right, so we are getting close right now to Kiryat Shmona, um, which is the northernmost major city in Israel. Well, since the war started, uh, the Israeli government started to uh, disrupt the, um, the GPS waves. So whenever you're in the north, uh, it sends you on the GPS to the to to the Lebanese airport. So as you can see right now where we are, we're actually somewhere around here. We're up here in this region of Israel without being exactly too specific. This is the area we're at. It's showing us that we're here. And this is and this is right on the tarmac of the Beirut airport. It's showing you that on Google Maps, on whatever you use on your phone. And it's a way for Hezbollah, who is targeting innocent civilians and people on the northern border of Israel, to have a harder time in attacking, right? So and to knowing uh, which places are more populated. Right. Just so you guys understand how much of on the frontier we're at right now. Stop border ahead. This is the border, the end of Israel, border of Lebanon right there. It's intense. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce somebody very special to my heart. This is my uncle Eitan. Shalom. Hi, everybody. He, an amazing person here. We won't get too much about his personal life, but an amazing human being. And he's uh, touring us around right now since the state of the war has happened. So you were saying this is a Hezbollah camp. Uh, like one picture, say me 5,000 words. Look at this tractor. Yeah. All this bunch of tractors here. Soon you're going to see a lot of apples getting rotten on the trees. No one to harvest them. Mm -hmm. And right there on the other side, on a high mountain, it's a Lebanese position slash Hezbollah, which is the same, which is the same thing. Uh, right there, you the can see it at the tippy top. Quiet, and I admire you guys for visiting me here because not too many people are doing so. Yeah. We are about 20 of us left here out of 600 than usual. Out of 600 people that live in the kibbutz, there's 20 yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. It's ghost town. You can see all. On the right, on the left, it's all military positions. So we went from army check um, um, And um, right now, first mission, <laughs> um, we're gonna visit some dear people, 14 Thai workers. That uh, they're amazing. They're willing to be here. Um, right during the war, they went back to Thailand. But I guess they figured. By the way, we are outside from the boundaries of Malkia. Mm -hmm to uh, no man's land. <laughs> Nobody's driving here but us now. But we're still in Israel. Uh, yeah, 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 of course. Anyway, those Thai workers, they've been to Thailand for two months or so. But then I guessed, I guess they I didn't talk to them, to them about this, but I guess they're figuring out. I have no way to support my family in Thailand, uh, which is very bad. But it's not as worse as being here in Malkia and work for my family. And the chance that I get hit by some attacks. So they calculated the situation and they chose to come here to help us. Right. Without them, I'm telling you, the farms, uh, the farms here are the only, are only source of income. There's no other thing. This is not Lebanon, it's Iran. The south part of Lebanon is Iran. It's an Iranian proxy at this point, yeah. Yeah, for a lot of people who think that Israel is at war right now with the south of Lebanon, we're not really... We have nothing to do against the Lebanese people. Nothing. 
I've been preaching this on the channel for a long time. The Lebanese people, for the most part, these are people who don't want this war. They're being taken hostage. When we talk about Lebanese people, we talk about Christians, Druze, Sunnah, uh, Shia. Not necessarily everyone supports Hezbollah. Yeah. Seriously. So, um, so we're going to visit those amazing Thai workers. That wow, it does feel a little fucking intense being... Holy that's shit, man. The, that's the border fence. That's fucking intense, it, it, dude. It is a little bit scary. It is a little bit scary. Well, you signed up for an adventure with the traveling yeah, clad, so. Hey, what do you go? Wow. So this is the vineyard. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we got Cabernet. We got we have so many brands of, of wine here. This has to be prunes. It's a must. Without this, you won't have any. I mean, you will, but it's not for that. Mm. So these guys are professional. They know the, exactly what they do. How to prune. Um, how many, we call it eyes, to leave behind them. And <laughs> they they work right down below. Are they watching from over there? I... If I'm Lebanese, I wouldn't be able to. I, I, I wouldn't like to stand outside with my head exposed. Sticking out from there. Um, <laughs> but there are some people over there, I believe. When they're firing rockets at us, they're firing from the other side of this mountain. Yes. So it's not like something right. that you could see from here, right? No, no, no. Lebanon is in a higher alti um, oh, altitude. It's a higher elevation. And um, it's hills and forests, so they're hiding among and if they can take a direct shot they will do that if will take then if not they will take a ballistic shot movie movie, movie? Photo. movie yeah youtube YouTube, uh, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube yeah so so he's using electric shears like electric pliers to cut the yeah. amazing So all, all of the workers here that are from Thailand originally, they've been here, they were here before oh, also? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All yes. of them. Yeah. Three, four years already. Mm. This guy speaks Hebrew. Almost fluent, I would say. Yeah? It's amazing. So we're going to do some work, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here in the vineyard? No, no. Oh, okay. That is the profession you need to know what to do. You need to know I what to do. Wanna, you know, start to stitch. Not for idiots like us. We have yeah. no, we're two city boys. <laughs> Okay, so Aitam just pulled us over to show us this. Okay. What is this? Um, that's a drone, um, Hezbollah. I was working with the Thai workers at the field yeah. how many days ago. <laughs> and then we see that. Um, it didn't explode. You can see it's pretty much, other than the wing, it's pretty much all one set. That's the explosive bit right there? Yeah, no, 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 I guess that's a tank fuel. Uh -huh. I guess all electronic here device. And it's a suicide drone, like a yes, kamikaze. Of course. And it landed on you guys? Nearby. Oh, man, that's freaking intense, man. You are a hero, Ethan, for being here, man. You really are. Alright, just a minute. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Is that a rocket? No. What's the, the smoke over there? Would we not have heard a siren? Siren? There's not enough time for siren here. There's no sirens here. No. Usually it doesn't matter. Unless it's a drone and you have a... Oh, yes. On a regular days it's it's fine I and mean, it's useful for humans but not for us farmers. So we need to take it out um, from and the golden fishes. Those apple trees, they're not dead. <coughs> they're dormant. Well, they're sleepy. But soon, soon they will wake up. You can see that. Mm. Okay, soon they will wake up. That means the apple's coming? That means flowers. Flowers. And uh, leaves coming up. And I would say mid-April or so, mm -hmm. you'll start to have uh, the first um, um, the first little apples. Okay? So, I'm taking it off. That's the first thing. Bye bye, buddy. 
Oh, you that's can it. See, you can the see tree apples will think there you. on the floor. Yeah. The tree will, is already thinking you. <laughs> okay, because the, it's blocking the sun. It's mm. a, nothing good with asparagus covering the tree. Nothing good comes and out. Wait, these apples, they're, they're fresh? Like they're coming now? No, these apples from last year. Last year? Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. So, uh, at that section, you like it? Still good? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> October first, October seventh, everything f oh well eight because seventh was Saturday Shabbat. October eighth, everything frozen here was frozen, just frozen. Um, <clears throat> so these golden leashes we harvested on time. Mm. Later on, I'll show you some parts of pink lady apples that we couldn't. They just went to waste, basically. You're gonna see it. Crazy. Um, <coughs> All right, let's get to work. Yeah, Tal. Uh, let's get to work. Definitely not as graceful as my uncle Ethan did it, but uh, but we're getting rid of this asparagus as we go. When I worked here when I was just 19 in this kibbutz, I was doing work doing uh, almonds and plums, and I worked through all of Bob Marley's entire discography, basically in that summer working here, and it was an amazing experience. So I'm happy to be back. Nathan, how's it going? Or, working hard or hardly working? Hardly working. We got apple snacks above you. Can you need a snack? Here's some more asparagus. So these Granny them. Smith are in season. Uh, way, way behind. Way past season. Yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's all gone. It's all. So this one was basically a wasted of the season? Uh, yeah, yeah. And you were oh, saying yeah. the truck down there? Uh, it's, a, it's a box. Uh -huh. Just was, we, were supposed to, we were supposed to harvest. Granny Smith will always be picked up later. Granny Smith and Pink Lady. Mm -hmm. So you'll see Granny Smith and Pink Lady apples on site, on the trees, getting rotten on the trees. It's a loss of so much money. That's sad. Uh, it's very sad. Um, so we will continue to visit other sites. This is part of my work to just look around and make sure that um, <clears throat> um, other crops get the attention. Okay? Ignore that sign, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Which one? The one that says stop, border ahead? So, um, so you can see here all the. There's, this is like literally villages in Lebanon. Uh, it's in the blue line of the uh, UN. That's the UN. UN, yeah, the UN blue line right there. You can see all these. These are Lebanese villages. This is already Lebanon. You can see the houses. The fence is pretty much non existent. I mean, it's small, but. It's very passable. And on a higher elevation, so they can watch. And have you have you had interaction with Lebanese people across yeah. the fence before? Before before the war, of course. Every now and then, yes. Most of the people are very very nice. I mentioned that before. We are colleagues. We are farms. We are, fa we are farmers. We work on the farms. And just as much as you see this devastating situation of pink lady on the trees not being harvested. Look at that. Um, I believe same thing happened to the on, on their side, and uh, yeah, they're waving and they're very nice people. Most not of a them. hostile relationship. No, not at all. Only <laughs> I have the feeling that they're scared of Hezbollah to make the, make that move to be for friendship, like to be Real friendly, friendship. yeah, to work together. For for example, why not working on the Mediterranean fruit fly project? We cannot do it on our own. We need our neighbors to, to, co to cooperate with us. But at the moment, there's no one to talk to. Look at those pink lady apples. What a shame. It's, crazy. it's all gone to waste. Yeah. It's as if really Hezbollah has taken the, the south of the country, and I mean parts of the north as well, as a hostage. And they're holding their own population hostage. It's a, it's a very sad, uh, sad reality to be in. Eitan says you want to see something cool. I want to see something cool. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Look at these beautiful flowers 
of the apples and right here it's a direct hit um, they managed to kill how many like dozen of uh, apple trees I guess this is a Bulkan a heavy rocket landed right here <laughs> you can see it took out oh, yeah. all these apple trees that were here yeah. just demolished them they're gone when when did this happen one week two weeks three weeks I don't know insane insane reality that that's it's crazy it really is my yeah. uncle <laughs> oh, okay. my beloved nephew tell me Listen, you you said something earlier <coughs> Hezbollah behind us um, and you gave some sweat here of your own sweat for the benefit of the kibbutz here so I want to pay you back um, I'll do it in such way of giving you my my shirt <laughs> you have to put it yes! in the laundry you have to put it in the laundry because this this shirt so a lot okay <laughs> it says Malkia God is my king in the shape of an apple an apple right you saw them yeah because uh, that's what we do for living <clears throat> God is my king Malkia which is a um, uh, high priest family served in the second temple in mm. Jerusalem but after the destruction of the second temple most likely they found themselves in that area um, <clears throat> so their name remained Malkia mm. high priest family the fifth out of 24 um, uh, high priest families I worked on the kibbutz I, I really wanted a jacket and we never were able to organize one and now I'm getting now you proper me. hand me down now you're telling me this so look at yours. this my god it's your paycheck i cherish this forever for your work <laughs> i'm going to be repping this in the vlogs you were talking That's about the concept of home and feeling threatened at mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. and i think that this is something that can really help people understand the psyche of somebody who's living on the north of israel maybe you can talk about that a little sure, bit i will of course um, until october 7th i had the feeling that nothing could go wrong at your home not is is your castle. It's, it's, it's home. I don't need to explain what home is. It's safety before everything else. And specific here, it's not just the building, the walls that that I live. This is home as well. All the farms that you saw, right? All that open wide area. That's that's home as well. The trees, you know, the trees. But you planted them, right? So you know them. But this is home. But things change since October seventh, and understanding that home is not necessarily can protect you. You can get slaughtered, you can get raped, you can... That understanding is horrifying. Oh. And I hope it won't happen again. It seems like we fell asleep. It was so much relied on our great economy and great life. If you do a survey, who loves his life? I mean, the most satisfaction of living. Israel is number five. Still, we're in the top ten. Still, people love this place, but always remember that to get a hold on this land, we have to have pay a high price. Um, I follow about the two guys as well, and I do have visits um, every now and then, even more than that, of people from all over the world, especially North America, but Europe, European as well. Um, Russia, Singapore, all over. They come here for like two, three hours, uh, for a small group, using my Jeep. Um, and you're witnessing the real thing, the real behind the scene, the real thing, the real situation. It's safe and everything. They get to see a real changing kibbutz. What is kibbutz? We live in kibbutz. Still have the, we still have the fathers, Holocaust survivors. Most of them are still with us. Mm -hmm. There we go, getting out to the farms of Malkia, so you get to see what is real farming. You can take parts like you did, right. and do some thing, pruning, harvesting, and of course, uh, security. Most of the time we get to meet some, hang out some so with some soldiers. Um, so it's really a great benefit of two, two and a half hours. 
If you guys more than uh, one Jeep, we can use two Jeeps. And if you're more than that, then you can use your bus to do that. It's just almost the same thing. Thank you. I will leave information down below in the description of how you can get in touch with Eitan. Personally, some of my favorite memories in Israel take place up here in the north of Israel, especially with Eitan. I have some incredible memories from adventures that we've been on. And I know for a fact, since he is family, that he will give you that personal feeling, that personal touch that's really important when you're in a place like this. So check him out down below in the description. And when you're here in Israel, do not miss for a second. Don't even think about missing the opportunity of doing a trip with Eitan. Love you, man. Love you so much. So good to see you. I'm bringing you guys somewhere really special now. Eitan departed, he's going to take a nap. I'm sure we're gonna have some more videos with him in the future, but I wanted to bring Natan to a place that I uh, is very important to me. Natan is the embodiment of all of you guys right now because he's a viewer and you guys are all going within him. <laughs> a poppy flower right here. In Hebrew we call it pereg. And uh, we just had the holiday of Purim. You take the little seeds in here, you can make a delicious little jam from this. I also believe that this flower can be turned into drugs, like opium. But those right there are poppy seeds, and they're very yummy. I have never eaten them raw, so I'm not going to right now because I don't want to be drugged. But that's the poppy flower. It's a very beautiful flower. This is an incredible view. That speed. Oh, look, a jackal. Oh, wow. Wow, safari. Yeah, hey, jackal. That's a golden jackal. That's the Asian golden jackal, I believe. I would have thought this was a fox. Something. No, that was a golden jackal. Are you sure? Yeah, that's Eitan. Um, amazing. As Eitan was saying, the animals have really returned. This is a viewpoint. When I used to work in this kibbutz, I used to come here often, uh, like pretty much once a day, just to view the place. Because I come from a place without many mountains. And so being here in this view is unbelievable. You get this sort of 360 panorama of Emek Hula, the Hula Valley here in Israel. And it's it's amazing. It's like there's one plate here, one valley, and then it goes down and turns into another valley. And the other side is the Golan Heights. Syria is just on the other side of that. That's the uh, Helmon. And you can see all the Lebanese villages there in the distance. This is your panorama. In uh, 2016, I walked by foot from the base of this mountain all the way through going that way all the way to Tel Aviv I did it over the course of a month and this north was the beginning the first day I hiked down from the mountain there from I think that's Kibbutz Dan right there on the base of the mountain all the way through and hiked up here and I did uh, my first night at Eitan's house here in the Kibbutz so this place has a, it means a lot to me to know that there is so much stress and hardship going on with the north especially with the people that I love up here and the farmers in this community, it's uh, its really, really sad, especially the fact that it's completely avoidable. And uh, just like Eitan said, war, it's a horrific thing, and it doesn't do good for anybody. And especially when it's a completely avoidable war, like the war between the north of Israel and, uh, and the south of Lebanon, completely avoidable. You can only hope that we don't do too much damage to this area and preserve it for what it is because it is absolutely magnificent and I am in love I haven't been here in like six years maybe even longer I love this place so much anyways I'll see you guys in the next one I love you long time class goodbye